Hello and welcome to Tricks of the S Trick channel. Today is the 20th of April 2018 and on today's video we're featuring uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg happens to be in the news a lot lately and um, we've had a, a file on her for some time now but we didn't quite expect that you know Facebook would be uh, being uh, asked a lot of questions and being made to look like um, it has a problem with security issues and privacy issues and all those kind of issues because people you have to understand that the Vatican owns Facebook all right and um, so for the mere fact that they're interrogating one of their own is just trying to sell you an illusion that Facebook is different from uh, uh, it's not a, another arm of the government that's just the way it's working right now so all what they're trying to do here is to make sure that they have legal laws to actually take your data because even though you're taking they're taking your data from behind your back and you don't actually know what's going on they want to make a legal law so you can't come after them and say hey you're taking my data or you're using my uh, privacy or uh, private data to do whatsoever you want to do so all what they're trying to do right now is make some sort of legal law so that you cannot come after them for taking your data and doing whatever they want to do with it because at the end of the day they're still taking the data so, for example, the best way you can find out if um, that you're being your data is being manipulated or being used without your consent is that if you're on any network, let's say you have a Wi-Fi at home, or you have a, or you get on a network, let's say you go to Starbucks, or you go to McDonald's, or any free Wi-Fi service. If say, for example, um, uh, you you're typing something, you do you do a search on that network. So let's take, for example, you're at home and you do a search on your phone for something. Maybe you're looking for maybe a particular dress or let's say a particular electronic out there and you do a search on your phone. You find out that when you get on your computer on a different device that's different from the device that you made that search on, you find out that you start having articles pop up about it about what you did a search on on your phone which is not even uh, the same uh, not which is not the same device that you're using uh separate from your phone you just find out that these articles keep popping up so for example if you get on a uh let's say a youtube channel on your phone and you type in a particular search let's say you even get on youtube let's say you just type a search on a search engine any search engine that you use on your phone and you go to watch a video on youtube all right different from the device that you use to make that search you get on a different device and just go on youtube and you just want to watch a video you find out it you start finding that what you were searching for on your search device comes up on youtube as a video do you think that is a coincidence no it's not because all the data that we have is being tracked not tracked in the way that they're watching you, but they're using it for some uh, some sort of algorithm is out there pro processing that data and giving you results that that, um, that show that your data is being tracked on that particular device and on that network that you're using. So um, with that, I'd like to welcome you to uh, today's um, video, actually. And uh, we want to be covering, uh, let's say, um, a small fish about I think two other smaller fish besides Mark Zuckerberg which I want to show you who they are uh, one of them is gonna be uh, Thomas Decker you could pause the video at any point in time and copy out this link and go read up on Thomas Decker Thomas Decker was very very popular in the John as uh, uh, John Connor in the Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles series that which is a, that was on TV for some time so uh, um, and he was also popular on the show called Heroes as well. Uh, Tom, Thomas Decker acted in all those particular movies. Uh, he's been around, we'll call it a he for now, but by the time we end with the video, you actually know that it was a he. So let me read a bit of stuff down here about Thomas Decker. Um, it says here, um, Thomas Decker did the voice in Little Food in the Land Before the Time, singing voice in The Land Before Time 5, and as Fieva Muskowitz in An American Tale, The Treasure of Manhattan Island, and An American Tale, The Mystery of the Night Monster. He's known for playing Jesse Brown in the 2000 remake of A Nightman M Street, and Smith in Greg Arecki's film Kaboom. So those are some of the, um, let's say, um, uh, um, uh, you know shows that Thomas Decker did and another person we'll be featuring uh, his name is Timothy 
Chalamet. Uh, Timothy Hall Chalamet, born December 27, 1995, is an American actor. Chalamet began his acting career in short films before appearing in the television drama series Homeland. So Chalamet was very, very popular in that series Homeland. If you've loved watching it, he made his feature, fe feature film debut in Jason Reitman's drama Men, Women and Children and appeared in Christopher Nolan's science fiction film Interstellar. Uh, so um, that is Timothy Chalamet. We'll also be featuring on this particular video. So if it's your first time on the channel, I'd like to welcome you. But before you can continue watching this video, you have to pause the video right here and go look for the primer video. The primer video is the most important video that you have to watch on this channel because it's going to give you a basic foundation of what we're trying to do here so you don't have many unanswered questions. The primer video is going to answer most of your basic foundation questions and give you a firm, a firm uh, plot of what you ought to expect when you're watching the video so you don't have so many questions that you kind of be thinking left right and center uh, the primer video which I'm gonna show you there's actually a playlist on the channel called primer and it has two or three more videos in there which is pertinent for you to also watch along with the primer video because it will help with your understanding of what we're gonna be talking about and what we're trying to present to you so if it's your first time on our channel I'd like to welcome you and I'd like you to pause the video right here and go look for the primer video and I'm going to show you how to get to the primer video also in this particular video so let's do that before we continue. So the primer video will be the oldest video on this channel it's called primer I'm holding my mouse right over right here and um, if you click on this particular video or any video that we have on this particular channel there's a link in the description section. Um, people if you're watching I just like to make this uh, recommendation if you're watching any video on our channel always go towards the link or oh, sorry go always go to the description section of the video and check if we have any links out there because there's some other videos that we might attach or some certain information that's uh, also pertinent to the video you're watching so always look for the description section as well to see if there's anything in, in there so if you're a new subscriber um, you need to click on this link right here and it's going to take you to a document the document is going to be called male versus female visual differences it's very very pertinent that you go through this document because it will show you different uh, sorry the visual differences between male and female. So as you all know, we do not like concentrating on the secondary or female male characteristics because the secondary is determined by the primary and the primary is the skeletal structure. So what am I talking about or what do I mean when I say secondary? So a lot of people base their assumptions on someone on how someone looks or if someone is a transgender or the gender of someone based on the secondary male or female characteristics. So for example, a secondary male characteristics would be like facial hair, would be something like the Adam's apple, it would be something like maybe uh, body hair, it would be something like, um, let's say, uh, the shape of the face, the jawline, uh, the neck, and all those kind of things and for the female secondary characteristics you tend to look at how let's say the uh, a female looks vice versa with her skin does she look you know um what's the best way what's the best word does she look uh, you know soft maybe that's the best way i could put it and maybe such a secondary female characteristics as breasts and a um uh and a bow uh, and a and a, a, a bum and you know the hourglass figure and all that kind of things which are the secondary female characteristics all that will throw you off because that can be changed by surgery by clothing as well to make someone who's actually female look very male so because we have a lot of people that we feature on our a channel if that if you were to look at the secondary characteristics you would probably think that the person is the gender they claim when they're not so that's why we concentrate on the primary characteristics because the primary determines the secondary and not the secondary, the primary. So that's why we say on our channel that if you're going to label someone a transgender, you have to show the primary uh, sex characteristics, which is determined on the skeleton. So if you go about by saying, oh, the person is a transgender because they have facial hair, they have a square jawline, they have, uh, let's say, a long arms, a long torso, they have a Dunnis belts, uh, they have a lot of muscle, they have an Adam's apple, um, and all that kind of stuff, you're going to get it wrong because you're basing your assumption on the secondary characteristics, not the primary. So the primary characteristics is like building a house, all right? If you're going to build a bungalow, and you're going to build a skyscraper, the foundation of the house is going to be different, which means the skeletal structure would determine how that house comes out. So that's why you can go from looking at, let's say, the windows of the house 
and how the house looks to say, oh, this is a skyscraper or this is a bungalow. You have to go look at the foundation of how the house is being built. So you have to base your assumption on the primary identification for either male or female and not the secondary, because anything else that you do besides that is going to be considered slander on the channel because you're doing you're focusing on what's actually wrong instead of the right way to determine the gender. So let's let you, let's get into this document so we can continue on with the transvestigation and just play a few things for you guys to notice where uh, this Mark Zuckerberg saga with Facebook is going so that you're not taken unawares because all what the government is trying to do here is, is because they own Facebook already. Like the Vatican owns Facebook because the Vatican owns the government. The Vatican owns everything. All what they're trying to do is make you guys believe that there are security breaches so they can pass more laws, legal laws to take your data legally because they are doing it illegally right now. So they want to do it legally so you can't take them to court and say, oh, you guys have my data. So that is what this is all about. So don't fall for the trick. Um, let's get into this uh, document uh, real quick so we can continue on with the transvestigation of Mark Zuckerberg. So in this particular picture right here, you're looking at a female to the left of my screen and the female has an arch in her back. Why does a woman have an arch in her back? A woman has an arch in her back because her pelvis is tilted forward, number one, and also because um, and also because uh, the uh, the arch is because it, it's the back is trying to support that tilted pelvis forward. So why does a female have a tilted pelvis forward? The tilted pelvis is necessary so that a baby can stay inside the womb for the nine months of conception that a baby goes through before he or she is being born into this world. Because without a tilted pelvis, the baby would fall right outside of the womb. Also. The arch is extra support for the weight of carrying pregnancy so that the weight of pregnancy is evenly distributed across the body without the woman hurting herself or hurting the baby. Because as we all know, arches are better support for distributing weight and carrying weight more than, you know, a straight supporting uh, uh, supports. So that's why a female has an arch in her back. If you draw a line uh, from below the shoulder blades of a female, the arch in the back is going to form a deep C arch in the back. If you draw it from high above the shoulder blades, it's going to form an S or a S shaped uh, arch in the back from higher up, right, higher up up here. So a woman's back is always going to be shaped like a C or an S. Now, a man's back is going to be shaped like a D or a P because men do not have any arches in their back because it's not necessary for a man to give birth. A man will never give birth, a man has never given birth, and it will never happen. So the back of a man is going to be arched outwards if you want to arch at all. A back of a woman arches inwards, as you can see here. A man's back arches outwards. It's going to be straight into the pelvis because males have straight pelvises because they do not give birth. It's not a requirement. They weren't designed that way, and they'll never give birth. So a man's back uh, forms the shape of a D or a P, but it's going to be straight into the pelvis and nothing is ever going to change that. So I want you to remember those letters when you're doing your transvestigation. A man's back is going to be shaped like a P or a D and it's going to be straight. A woman's back is going to be shaped like an S or a C. So I want you guys to remember that all the time. So I'm scrolling to the document just to show you how that female's back arches. As you can see right here, here's a woman kneeling down. She has this deep C arch in her back because her pelvis is tilted forward. And also, it doesn't matter if the female is big, small, size doesn't play any factor. The arch of a woman's back will always be there irrespective of her size. If she's big, tall or small, as you can see right here, there's a big female to my left and she has an arch in her back and her pelvis is tilted forward. A small female to my right, she has an arch in the back and her pelvis is tilted forward. It doesn't matter if the female's got muscles, she lifts a lot of weights, nothing can change the skeletal structure once it's determined at conception. That's how from dead remains and bones we are able to identify the sex of someone based on the skeleton because the skeleton of a female is designed to give birth. That of a man is not. And so that is what distinguishes the, the male from the female. The female is designed to give birth, her skeleton is designed to give birth. 
the skeleton of a man is not. So this muscular female here has an arch in the back, muscular female here arch in the back. So let me play a clip to show you the most uh, defining feature of both males and females is the hips because the hips of a female are below the crotch necessary for childbirth. So the hips are out of the way so that there's enough room in the pelvis for a baby to stay inside. And there's also enough space for the baby to come out. A man's hips are above his crotch so that his genitals can function outside the body temperature optimally. So because it's not necessary, so the man's hips are above the crotch, which constricts the pelvis, and there is a very little room inside the pelvis of a man. So that's why a man is not designed to give birth in any way, shape, or form. So let's play that short clip so we can move on. So right here, this is how a female a non normally or naturally looks. A female starts spreading from underneath her elbows as she starts getting wider, and the widest point will always be the hips, which are below the crotch. So if you're a regular female, you can stand in the mirror and see this. You will notice that from your elbows, you start getting wider and the widest point will always be below the crotch. The hips are out of the way of the pubic region so that a baby can come out of here and so that a woman, all right, can have enough space for a baby to be in there. So that's why the hips are below the crotch. It's perfect. That's perfect design. OK, so um, some people get the notion that because a woman's shoulders are wider than her hips, that makes her to be a man. You probably hear that in a lot of channels, which I wouldn't go into the name right now. You hear it when you hear it. I don't have time to mention the channel's name right now. So it doesn't matter uh, if a woman's shoulders are wider because there are female who have very wide shoulders. But the location of the hip will always be below the crotch regardless. So you have to remember that. So the hips will always be below the crotch regardless. It doesn't matter if the female's waist is wider than her hips and she has very narrow hips. The location of the hips is always below the crotch because skeletally, that's the primer, uh, primary identification marker for being a female, that your hips are below the crotch. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you come from. It doesn't matter your, say, uh, sorry, your size or your shape. Your hips of a woman will always be below the crotch. So, um, for example, right here, this female is going to be measured. Uh, her hips are going to be measured so they can, she can be fitted into a dress or pants or whatever form of clothing that a lady wears. You have to understand that all around the world, clothes are sewn everywhere and taken into many different countries. So in order to do that, you, the people who sew the clothes have to know the location of the female hip. If females had varying degrees or varying places for their hip, those clothes which are sewn around the world and brought into different countries would not fit because the hips are many varying uh, degrees and places in the body. But this is not the case. Every woman's hips are below the crotch. If you find that your hips are above your crotch, that means you were born male and something happened to you. And the people you have to ask are the people who took care of you and your parents who might have transgendered you from, you know, a man to a woman or vice versa, because the location of the hip will never change. It's always going to be below the crotch for a female. And it's always going to be above the crotch for a man. So I'm going to play the clip so you can see how this is done right here. So the tape goes round and the widest point right there of the hip or the widest point of a woman's body in the natural sense is always going to be below the crotch. As you can see right there, the tape goes round below the crotch. Also, because of how a woman's pubic arch is wider than a man, because that's necessary for childbirth, is usually 120 degrees and average or wider for females. And for males, it's always 90 degrees or sorry, for males, it's always 90 degrees or less for the pubic arch. The pubic arch is the is the uh, space in between your crotch. OK, so for females, it's wider. So. Because of that wide pubic arch that females have, it makes the pelvis of a female to be farther apart in the body. And because of that, the hips are farther apart in the body. That's the reason why a female has an hourglass figure, because, because of the wide pubic arch, which pushes everything in the pelvis farther apart, the hips are farther apart in the body. So a female's Q angle, the Q angle is the angle between the hip and the knee, is always going to be much more acute than that of a man. All right, as you can tell right here, so this is the hip and the knee is further down. So it's going to form a very acute Q angle. So that's part of the reason why you still find that hourglass figure in a female. 
So uh, this female is going to turn around so you can see where that Q angle is and where the location of the hip is from the back. As you can see right here, the location of that hip is just slightly above the female's bum line that you see right here, but regardless, is below the crotch from the front. Now, the reason why this is the case is because the pelvis of a woman is tilted forward that way. So that's why it's closer to the bum line than that of a man. So if this was a man, this Q angle right here, the hip would be farther apart and farther away from this bum line. So if you find females in which uh, this Q angle is farther up and farther away from the bum line, most likely you're looking at a male and not a man. So um, I always tell this to a lot of people, if you find, if you're trying to do a trans investigation or trying to ascertain someone's gender through pictures and you have problems looking at the picture from the front, try to see if you can find a picture from the back. Because once you see someone from the back, you're going to clearly know that you're either looking at a male or a female because the Q angle is going to be so acute and so pronounced that you're going to recognize that you're looking at either a male or a female. So try to see if you can find pictures from the back of the person if you're confused. So um, let's move further on and talk about some few things before we jump right into Mark Zuckerberg. Just to let you guys know uh, how this is going to turn around. We're going to play some news clips for you so you can actually get the picture of what's going on because a lot of people listen to the news and they don't know how the Vatican is being uh, is playing them, uh, you know, to uh, uh, playing or using their minds to do whatever they want to do because a lot of people are very gullible, I have to say. Gullible because they have stopped to use their brains. They have stopped for a second to think about what they are listening to or what they are hearing. They're just merely accepting and then regurgitating back it back to you. So, for example, a lot of people dislike Trump, but they've never met Trump. They just go off what the media tells them, that Trump is such a bad dude as they may want to make us believe that he's actually a dude. But that's the case. They've never stopped for a second to think, to say, okay, um, why is Trump being... Um, put in such a negative light. But all these are ploys by the Vatican because the Vatican runs a world. So when you hear people tell you that the Jews run the world, it's not the Jews. The Jews are a cover. The Vatican, the albino Vatican, which runs the world today, created the Jews. Okay? The Jews are just a cover. A lot of people may hear that word and say, what's the meaning of an albino? Or what am I talking about? When people say they are white, what you're saying in essence is that they are an albino because they don't know the history of the word or where it comes from. So that's why they think that white is a color. White is not a color. White is the absence of all color. So if you're interested in knowing all about that, get on the channel and look for the playlist called Myth of Whiteness and play it from part number one, which features Michelle Obama. And we'll get into a clear... Uh, mm, a clear analysis of telling you what you are and who you really are because in all truth anybody with straight hair all right is an albino because we are all black people regardless of what we look like there are black people and black people are let's say the dominant uh, genetic traits so anybody with straight hair is an albino who was given birth to by a black woolly head descendant maybe a few years ago or whatever the case might be. So but get on the channel and look for the uh, the playlist or look for the videos called Myth of Whiteness. We have it up to part number 15. It's a long winding series, but please get yourself informed so you can understand that at the end of the day that we are all black people and some people are just albinos because the people in the elite, the elites do not want you guys to know that. They want you to believe in the concept of race because the elites are not working for you. They're working for somebody else. All right. They want you to uh, have that idea of race so that they can keep themselves in power. That's all what it's all about. They want to be the people in power and want to remain that way. So they don't want to get wiped out by black people breeding out uh, breeding out anybody who has straight hair. So that is the reason for racism. Very, very short and precise to the point. So get on the channel and look for the myth of whiteness and let's continue on with the transvestigation of Mark Zuckerberg who works for the Vatican. Facebook is owned by the Vatican like everything else that is in this world is all run by the Vatican and not the Jews. If you believe that it's been the Jews for a very long time, you have believed in a lie. And that's what we're here for, to let you understand your world. So let's go. So we both, before we continue on, we'd like to uh, let you guys know that this channel is a different kind of channel. We do not appreciate any form of rumors or slandering. If you want to slander somebody on this channel, the best way to do it is send us an email. 
uh, email is the same as the channel name at gmail.com we can entertain or condone any form of slander or rumor spreading through email but once you get on the comment section you have to provide facts facts based on the female the primary identification for sex which is based on the skeleton so if you come up with this channel and you say someone is a transgender or you're trying to get to know if someone is a transgender or you're asking about that the person is suspicious or not those kind of comments are going to get you blocked the only way those comments are going to get passed is that you have to provide links of pictures based on the primary way to identify the sexes which is based on the skeleton that means your pictures have to show that the person has or does not have hips below the crotch an arch in the back a pelvis is tilted forward or wide pubic arch to be considered that you are trying to get information so if you start off your comments by saying someone is a transgender everybody's a transgender or you send us a Google search results of the person to say this is the evidence that we have that someone is a transgender or you or you send a video that you did not make that somebody else did make right and say that this person is a transgender that it has been proven or you send or make any uh, links of pictures showing that the person has a strong jawline long arms long torsos Adam's apples uh, a, a brow ridge or a brow bossing or a pointed chin looks mannish or looks womanish which are all secondary identifying features then you are still going to get blocked there's no slandering allowed on this channel in whatsoever shape, oh, sorry in whatsoever shape or form so you have to provide your facts so based on that um, the Vatican has been hard at work trying to shut us down because we are showing you guys the truth uh, trying to make you understand the differences between all the lies that have been spreading around on YouTube and trying to label someone a transgender so you guys do not know the actual transgenders out there and like I've said before the most transgenders the highest number and percentages of transgenders are in politics the people you find in Hollywood are deviation from you looking at the guys that are in politics it doesn't matter where the person is from or, or what a layer or tier of government the person is the greatest number of transgenders in the world are in politics in whatsoever tier of politics or government that you find them it could be in the house of representatives it could be your senate it could be maybe should I say it on this video I don't want to say it but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if the person is a supreme court justice or whatsoever the highest number all right of politics of uh, sorry highest number of transgenders are in politics okay so um the Vatican will shut us down at some point in time which we know that they're gonna do it in a very sneaky way and this channel is gonna get offline and and come be gone because they don't want you knowing the truth because like I've said before and I've always said uh, again and again that YouTube is owned by the Vatican and the Vatican is own, is owned by YouTube there's no such thing as a online community or whatsoever uh, or let's say community guidelines or community whatever name they want to give it that's based on a YouTube community it's all false that's the Vatican sitting down and censoring free speech now here's what people don't know understand about free speech free speech does not mean to say that you get to say anything that you like all right at any point in time because that is the uh, preaching that the Vatican wants you to believe is free speech free speech means say what you want to say but back up the facts show the facts and that's what we do on our channel we are using free speech but if free speech is that we are backing up with facts we are showing you the facts of what we're saying we're not just saying okay this person is a transgender and we're giving you some frivolous facts we're showing you real facts that everybody can identify with all right but the Vatican doesn't want this kind of information out there so uh, they are strongly trying to shut the channel down which we know they will eventually because it's gonna be maybe at some point in time it's gonna be too hard to ignore because they're trying to make us look like we are crazy we don't know what we are seeing or let's say they're just trying to avoid us and say there's uh, just a bunch of loonies out there but at a particular point in time the information is gonna be way too strong that they're gonna have to shut us down so we know that so because of that we have put all this information in a book the book is out so if you did send us an email even though we have limited copies we have to service those that did send us an email about the book before we can take on more people so if you're interested in the book send us an email the book is out we'll be sending emails out to the people 
who were interested in it and giving them a chance to get the book. So if you want to get on that list, because we have limited copies, we have no printing presses or publishers, publisher house, we have to do it one way or the other. You have to send us an email and then we'll let you know when a copy is available for you. So we're going to go down the list of the people who send us an email. So if you haven't received an email yet, just bear with us. You'll get an email in time. All right. We have to go through that list because we have to serve it, serve the uh, the people who are interested in the book according to the order. That means it was a, is, is a based on a first come, first serve basis. All right, first come, first serve. So if you're number one uh, on the list of the email that you sent to us saying, okay, you were interested in the book, you'll get a, a, um, a chance to get it first before we go down that particular list. So the book is out and we want you we want to get this book out as to many people as we can like we said we'll ship the book to you anywhere you are in the world provided you have a mailing address we'll let you know the price and the cost of shipping when you send us an email with the book so you can be prepared for it and another thing uh, this is in a Q video which were blocked uh, they, uh, the Vatican said that we had nudity on that particular video but if you go through that video, you find no such thing as nudity and because they couldn't even list the minute mark of where they had uh, the nudity on that particular video because it doesn't exist. It's just the Vatican had a work trying to shut us down. So please, if you're interested in watching the Selena Q video, look for the Bono video. It's going to give you instructions on how to watch that particular video. And also, in case the channel goes down, we're building a website. When the web website is under construction, so please send us an email if you're interested all right in the book and when you send us an email we'll also keep you on a list of email correspondence correspondences in the future in case this channel goes down then we can contact you through email also subscribe to our second channel um the second channel is called tricks of the s trade 2 just in case this one goes down we can still have some sort of avenue to reach you before uh, our website becomes fully uh fully online so for now um let's get back into the transvestigation let's go through uh because mark zuckerberg um is being uh queried by the u.s senate or house of representatives at this point we don't know which one is which because they all work for the vatican if they were very much interested in the truth if this whole saga with uh facebook is really really true the very first thing that the united states senate should have asked Mark Zuckerberg would have been how come that you're a woman and you're masquerading around as a man because the truth to be told the House of Senates who are doing the querying of Mark Zuckerberg and Mark Zuckerberg all work for the same master all right and that is the Vatican so nothing is coming this is just a show so let, let me read something from Mark Zuckerberg's page so you can understand that Whatever's happening to Mark Zuckerberg right here is because I believe that he's come is being uh, crowned as a 33rd degree Freemason. So that's why all this is happening. So this is some sort of like, a, let's say, hazing ritual that he has to go through. And this is also a show for the public to actually believe that Facebook is not owned by the government, which is owned by the Vatican and that people have privacy in their lives. And this is also a show so that they can pass laws to make it legal to be taking your already private data and making it there so that you can go after them at the end of the day because they're going to make you believe that Facebook goes through a lot of security breaches because you, I want you to understand this thing, people. Terrorism from start to finish is run by your government. Terrorism is not just a group of disgruntled fellows out there doing all sorts of crazy things out there. We, we make you understand in fine detail what terrorism is all about, where it came from when you get a book. We don't have time to explain that in this particular video. But everything about security in your world is run by the Vatican and run by your government. If you're scared and you're scared of living and you're afraid, know that the government is behind it. Know that the Vatican is behind it. So um, this whole idea of security breaches that the government is making you believe because let's say you hear something as virus attacks, security breaches and websites coming down. That's all a ploy. It's all a ploy so they can pass laws to gather to 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 make it legal for them to take your private information in the name of trying to make you safe.
That's all what it's about. So let's get into some videos on Mark Zuckerberg. And let me just read some few things from his webpage so you can see that it's littered with the Vatican Code of Numbers. If you've never heard, if you've heard that word for the very first time and you're interested in the Vatican Code of Numbers, please go to the channel and look for the Lisa Lopes or Lisa Lopez video. I don't know how it's pronounced, whether it's Lopes or Lopez, but it's spelled L-O-P-E-S. And that video will show you clearly what the Vatican Code of Numbers is because it's something we see every day. But since our brains are not being taught well and we don't know what we're looking at, we don't know that it's a Vatican Code of Numbers. So look for the playlist. There's also a playlist on the channel called Vatican Code of Numbers as well. And that will list every video that we've talked about the Vatican Code of Numbers, even though the Lisa Lopes video is going to make you fully understand it when you watch it. So let's continue on so that we can uh, finish this video. So here is Mark Zuckerberg's um, um, official stats page on Wikipedia. You could pause the video at any point in time and copy out the link or just Get in your search engine and type Mark Zuckerberg and see the results that come up. But we're on the Wikipedia page all the same. Now, if you go through this wiki page on Mark uh, Zuckerberg, there's a Vatican code of numbers littered everywhere. So Mark was born, I think, in 1984. He's age 33 right as of now. So that is why he's going through this hazing ritual, because this is a stooge of the Vatican. And they have to knight him as a 33rd degree Freemason. That means somebody that they can trust, literally, even though they, they bred him from childhood to be in this position. Because Mark did not create anything in his dorm room. This is all uh, stories created by the Vatican to make you feel good with Facebook. Because I've tried to make people understand that the whole social media, social media from start to finish is a government uh, invention invented by the Vatican itself. Now, why is the Vatican interested in your private data? Because the Vatican do, doesn't have, the, the best way I can put it is this way. The Vatican is trying to watch everybody. All right. So what way can you make people, you know, give them give them their own personal information without without making it look like as the government is intruding into your private lives, even though they do it in so many other ways. But how can they make you give them their own most personal, your own most personal information? So that is the idea of social media. Because social media can make the government know about your habits, the people you like, and the things you do not like. So they can be able to, you know, put a label and know everything about you such that they can take you out at any point in time if you're a dissident. So people are getting on social media, and the government makes social media make it look like we want everybody to have a voice, okay? We want you to have a way to communicate with other people around you. When the most effective way of communication is gathering privately, why do you have to gather publicly? Because once you get on, once once you get public, everybody knows your true intents and purposes. So the idea is to make private things to be public, and social media is the way to make you believe in that. Because social media makes people superstars. For no reason, because people think the celebrity life is so great, all right? You want to be known. You ought to seek to be heard, not to be known. Always seek to be heard, not to be known. So a lot of people are giving the government their private lives through social media, giving them the kind of foods they eat, the kind of clothing they would like to wear, the stuff they like, so that the government can tailor make, you know, Things that will fit into the slavery that people so much like. Because technically we are all slaves. So they're just trying to sweeten the pot so that people keep loving the new world order without knowing that it's slavery. So that's all what social media is about. And like I've said before, Mark Zuckerberg did not create anything in his dorm room. This is a, a creation of the Vatican. Everything that we own, that we use in this world, so we're sorry, is owned and run by the Vatican. They're the creators of everything. It doesn't matter if it's uh, in technology, science, medicine. They're the brains behind it. Not that people don't make inventions. People do make inventions. But by the time you start making that invention, when you start looking for money for that invention, you're going to get involved with the Vatican. That's just the way it works, and the Vatican is going to buy it over. 
that's just the way it works so if you're interested just go through uh mark zuckerberg's perch and you'll find out that it's littered with the vatican code of numbers on his page because it will tell you that Va uh, mark uh, sorry mark zuckerberg was born on may 14 1984 uh, he see right here he says uh um he he has three sisters vatican code of numbers three sisters he has three sisters then he also talks about that um uh, he talks about where his sisters were raised up. He says Randy, Donna, and Ariel were brought up in Dubs, Ferry, New York, a small Worcester County village about 21 miles north of Midtown Manhattan. Who cares about the distance from Midtown Manhattan? If you just wanted to tell us that dispersed people were raised in Worcester County, you should have just said so. Who cares about the number of miles and how far it is from Manhattan? But they just want us to put that 21 miles in there because the 22 plus 1 is equal to 3 just to litter this guy with the Vatican Code of Numbers and make you know that this is one of them for those who understand how to read when they pick up stuff to read about Mark Zuckerberg. The people that are in the know. So this is all, you know, this is all a Vatican design. There is nothing uh, organic about Facebook. So let's get into some of the... Uh, uh, let's say questions or uh, let's say some of the uh, uh, let's say uh, what do they call it the uh, panel that were set up to uh, uh, you know quiz Mark Zuckerberg on his security breaches and how he runs the company and all this side show and then we'll play a video that actually shows you where this is going so that is where the real information is and all what the Senate and whatsoever they're doing is just a side show so you guys don't know because they want you to believe that all these things are happening naturally so that the government can have legal laws that protect them from keeping your private data. That's all what it's about. They're doing it legally right now because people do not consent to it, but they want to make it legal so that you cannot take them to court and you cannot win that court case. So let's do that. So this is part of the Senate hearings on Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook and, you know, the Vatican trying to make us believe that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is a separate entity from the government, which they actually own it. And the people all in here asking these questions all work for the Vatican. So the Vatican is asking its own people the same questions. And we out here are being fooled and thinking that there is totally two different people in the room when they're all the same. They're all the same. So this story is just trying to make us believe that Va Facebook is going through a lot of security issues and privacy issues so that laws can be passed to legally hold the stuff that they're already taking illegally in trying to take your private information and use it as their own. OK, so that they can track you and do whatever that they want to do with it, because this is all what this is about. Uh, trying to make, uh, pass legal laws for keeping your private information because Facebook can do it uh, illegally. They're doing it, but they're doing it illegally, but making you think that they're not. All right. So this is all a side show. It's a side piece. So let me play this particular clip and then we'll play another clip. Then we'll play the clip that you should really listen to and pay careful attention to the words because those are the ones that will tell you exactly what is going on because all this is a side show because people are gullible. They don't know what they are hearing. They don't know what they're listening to. They just believe what they think that these people are saying. So let's play this clip and we can continue. Answer, what do we tell our constituents, given what's happened here, why we should let you self-regulate? What would you tell people in South Carolina that given all the things we've just discovered here, it's a good idea for us to rely upon you to regulate your own business practices? Well, Senator, my position is not that there should be no regulation. Okay. I think the Internet is increasingly important. you embrace important. regulation? I, I think the real question, as the Internet becomes more important in people's lives, is what is the right regulation, not whether there should but, but be or not. But you as a company welcome regulation? I think if it's the right regulation, then yes. You think the Europeans have it right? Uh, I think that they get things right. Have you ever submitted? <laughs> That's true. Uh, so would you work with us in terms of what regulations you think are necessary in your industry? Absolutely. Okay. Would you submit to us some proposed regulations? Yes. And I'll have my team follow up with you so that way we can have this discussion across the different categories where I think that this discussion needs to happen. Look forward to it. Would you support a child online privacy bill of rights for kids under 16 to guarantee that that information uh, is not reused for any other purpose without explicit permission from the parents or the kids. Senator, I think the 
As a general principle, I think protecting, protecting minors and protecting their privacy is extremely important. And we do a number of things on Facebook to do that already, which I'm happy to get. And I appreciate it. I'm helpful. talking about a law. I, I'm talking about a law. Would you support a law to ensure that kids under 16 have this pri I, Piracy Bill of Rights? I had this conversation with you in your office seven years ago about this specific subject in Palo Alto. Um, and, uh, and I think that's really what the American people want to know right now. What is the protections? Uh, this, uh, what are the protections that are going to be put on the books for their families, but especially for their children? Would you support a privacy bill of rights for kids where opt-in is the standard? Yes or no? Senator, I think that that's an important principle. And I appreciate I think, that. And I think we should. Do we need a law to protect those children? That's my question, too. Do you believe we need a law to do so? Yes or no? Senator, I'm not sure if we need a law, but I think that this is certainly a thing that, 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 that deserves a lot of discussion. I, and I, 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 again, I couldn't disagree with you more. Other, we're leaving these children to the most rapacious commercial predators in the country who will exploit the... So all this is just a, a sideshow because a lot of people fall for this good acting because the way these people ask questions, you're going to actually believe it's uh, it's uh, something that's happening in real. You, you can, we can all do this. It's, for example, I ask you questions in a forceful tone and cut you off before you answer. You're going to actually think, uh, I mean, this is acting. You're going to actually think, oh, what the questions are really real. And, you know, the senator was really trying to uh, ruffle Mark Zuckerberg's uh, feathers and everything else. But this is all rehearsals. This is acting that they've done behind closed doors. They've put Mark Zuckerberg seen so many times in this kind of situations, given him the answers or given her the answers and we'll find out so that he can be comfortable with these rapid-fire questions and make the public and sell to the public that these things are actually real. It's all a sideshow. Everybody in this particular video right here are all working for the Vatican, including Mark Zuckerberg, because if they were interested in the truth, the first thing they should have told you was, Mark Zuckerberg, you are a woman. Why are you acting like a man? Why are you lying to us that you are one if it was all about the truth? But this has nothing to do with truth. It's just a sideshow. So let's play the next clip. And then after that, we'll play the clip, like I said before, which is pertinent for you to listen to the words and tenses to you, for you to understand where this is going with Facebook and your data, that the government is trying to pass laws to legally take your data because they have not done so yet. And just like uh, with this particular bill or a particular law that's called the smith mon Act, which gives the government the right, the legal right to tell you lies, this is the same thing that's going to happen here. So you can't take them to court and win that particular uh, court, uh, you know, case with them. So let's do that. Uh, there have been numerous instances with Facebook. In May of 2016, Gizmodo reported that Facebook had purposely and routinely suppressed conservative stories from trending news including stories about CPAC, including stories about Mitt Romney, including stories about the Lois Lerner IRS scandal, including stories about Glenn Beck. In addition to that, Facebook has initially shut down the Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day page, has blocked a post of a Fox News reporter, has blocked over two dozen Catholic pages, and most recently blocked Trump supporters Diamond and Silk's page with 1.2 million Facebook followers after determining their content and brand were, quote, unsafe to the community. To a great many Americans, that appears to be a pervasive pattern of political bias. Do you agree with that assessment? Senator, let me say a few things about this. First, I understand where that concern is coming from because Facebook and the tech industry are located in Silicon Valley, which is an extremely left-leaning place. And uh, I, this is actually a concern that I have and that I try to root out in the company is making sure that we don't have um, any bias in the work that we do. And I think it is a fair concern that um, that people would, so, would, so would me, at least me, wonder about. Let me ask this now, question. Are, are you aware of any ad or page that has been taken down from Planned Parenthood? Senator, 
I'm, I'm not, but let me just... Uh, how about moveon.org? Sorry? How about moveon.org? I'm not specifically aware of those. How about cases. any Democratic candidate for office? I, I'm not specifically aware. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. In your testimony, you say that you have fifteen to 20,000 people working on security and content review. Do you know the political orientation of those fifteen to 20,000 people engaged in content review? Uh, no, Senator. We do not generally ask people about their political orientation when they're joining the company. So as CEO, have you ever made hiring or firing decisions based on political positions or what candidates they supported? No. Why was Palmer Lucky fired? That is a specific personnel matter that seems like it would be inappropriate to You just made to a here. specific representation that you didn't make decisions based on political views. Well, is that I, can, I can commit that it was not because of a political view. Do you know of those 15 to 20,000 people engaged in content review, how many, if any, have ever supported financially a Republican candidate for office? Senator, I do not know that. Your testimony says it is not enough that we just connect people. We have to make sure those connections are. So like we've said, everything here is a sideshow. And like I started saying before in the video that the greatest number of transgenders are people of civil obedience under the protocols of Zion, which the Vatican created to make us believe that all these people are happening organically. So don't we don't we don't come to the understanding that a world is being ruled and organized by a monarchy behind it. And that monarchy is the Vatican. The greatest number of civil obedient slaves are in politics. So that means as you're looking at this particular uh, uh, Senate hearing right here, about three quarters. Let me just let me just be uh, let me be, be fair enough so it doesn't look like uh, I'm I'm saying something very very wrong. About three quarters are actually not transgenders, and one quarter of the people inside this room are. And um, we'll be making videos on a lot of politicians as we go down the line, as long as the Vatican allows uh, YouTube channels to still be up for uh, on up for. Uh, the duration that they will allow it without actually shutting it down because they don't want you guys to know the truth about a quarter of the people in this room are transgenders and they're all in politics all right so um, um let's play the pertinent video that i wanted you guys to uh, actually listen to the words so you you may not have listened to anything on here but i want you to listen to the words carefully on the next video because this is what's going to tell you what um all this is going to about it's going to tell you exactly what the saga with Facebook on what the intentions are, but because people don't quite listen, they don't know. So I'm going to play this video right now, and then after that, we'll continue with the transvestigation of Mark Zuckerberg. or Sheryl Sandberg in the Facebook Cambridge Analytica scandal, we're calling it that. This as regulators around the world begin to turn the heat up on the company. The stock continuing to fall down about 1% today, down about 10% this week. It's lost more than $60 billion in market cap just in the last two sessions. Joining us now from Washington, former SEC Commissioner Harvey Pitt, currently CEO and Managing Director at Calorama Partners, and also with us, former White House Political Director and CNBC contributor Sarah Fagan. Welcome to you both. Sarah, let me just start with you. <laughs> What is the appropriate role of regulation here? There are people calling for a new digital agency like the EPA. Is that enough or will customers ultimately can you trust the market to do the right thing and say, you know what, I'm over this website and I'm leaving and that's it? Now, I don't I think Facebook's reach is too great uh, for uh, customers to walk away from it. There's not a, a, an alternative right now for people to communicate with their friends, at least in the way those of us over the age of 25 do it. Um, you know, Here's the thing, you've got Republicans and Democrats alike asking very serious questions. And I think that this is not likely to have a happy ending for Facebook. I think you will see years of regulation, years of investigations, questioning about their data practices, their privacy restraints for consumers, and they're likely to face significantly more regulation. And this is not gonna go away anytime soon. 
Uh, Harvey, in terms of what Facebook has and hasn't done wrong here, clearly they say that they weren't hacked and that uh, you know they were duped, as it were. Is that a fair response from them? No, I think it's um, actually a very poor response. Um, uh, the statement um, is accurate but false. Um, it isn't really a question of whether they were hacked. It's a question of whether their data was used for improper purposes. And that, it seems, clearly occurred. So denying a hacking uh, is just basically trying to deflect the problem in the hopes that it will go away. And this problem is simply too large to go away. Harvey, what was the improper usage as far as you can tell? Well, the improper usage is that um, this company, uh, uh, Cambridge Analytica, apparently uh, received uh, data on about 50 million Facebook users and attempted to use that in terms of a political campaign. It doesn't really matter what the use was. Um, Facebook had already been sanctioned previously by the FTC. It has had data problems and it apparently knew about this for two years and yet the data was used for improper purposes. Sarah, one of the things that has made this story kind of uh, more attractive for everyone to cover is the potential links Cambridge Analytica had with the Trump campaign. Uh, but a, a campaign using social media data, uh, a campaign trying to maximize the data that's available, is that anything that's actually to be ashamed of? And is it in fact something that the previous uh, Obama campaigns had done itself as well? Uh, yes. They have. Uh, Democrats and Republicans alike use data to do a more efficient job of targeting voters and communicating with voters on issues they care about. Look, there is a benefit to voters when this data is used as long as it's used properly. And good data standards and practices suggest that you have very uh, clear systems in place to protect people's identity and to not share it with third parties. And that seems to be uh, where the breakdown was that uh, a individual mined this data off of Facebook and then improperly shared it with Cambridge Analytica. And Cambridge Analytica uh, certainly uh, doesn't appear to have protocols in place that are very responsible. Uh, and so, I, you know, the one thing that's interesting about this is, you know, for all the improper use of data, perhaps, I don't know that this firm was particularly effective. Uh, certainly in Republican circles at the time of the election, they were not widely received to be doing a, a great job. Uh, there was frustration inside the Trump campaign with Cambridge Analytica. So I think that's being lost in this discussion, that even though they did something improper and it needs to be investigated, uh, yeah. I don't know that it was actually being used in the campaign. That's a, a point. And Harvey, the third party researcher involved in all this, said he's being a, made a scapegoat by everybody involved, that he did nothing wrong. And Facebook's own policies about the use of this data have changed to since disallow something that then was allowed. So it, what were you going to say? The problem here is um, basically um, they were alerted, according to news reports, Facebook was uh, two years ago. They already had a consent decree. So you've, if you listen carefully, then you would understand where this Facebook saga is going. Um, they're talking about security. They're talking about bias in Facebook's uh, handling of like maybe data and handling of, you know, people's private concerns and private data. Uh, they're talking about that there has to be regulation following up in the next couple of years. So all this is a legal framework for the government to actually, which is the government, which is actually the Vatican, to take your data and use it so that you can take them to a court of law and win that case. Because they're going to make you believe that based on all this that's been happening, that the people, because that's always what they'll want to say when they're trying to make laws, that the American people want regulation on Facebook so that their data can be secure. Meanwhile, it's totally the opposite. So do not fall for this uh, lies. And uh, like I've always said on a channel, like we always say on a channel, please look with your eyes, but see with your brain. Listen to the words, listen to the details. All right. Pay attention so you can know what's going on in your world so that somebody is not going to walk into your door and take you while you're sleeping when you have no idea of what you're being taken for. At least be informed and inform other people. All right. 
stay out of social media. Social media is the most dangerous, one of the most dangerous tools that the government is using to make people believe in their falsification of our world and history. You do not need to be a celebrity. You do not need to be on Facebook to get your business done. All right. Keep your business private. If you're using Facebook, use it for a business. That's the best way to do it. Don't go around showing your trips or the kind of food you eat or where you go. If it has nothing to do with business, stay out of it. You don't need to. Pick up the phone and call your friend. If you want to show your friend, if you really have a friend, I mean, that's what it means to be friends, right? Pick up the phone, call the person, go pay a visit, show your pictures and what you guys were doing. You, don't need, you do not need to paint all your business in public. What people have been reduced to, you know, such children... Because we have grown adults working around with the brain of a four-year-old and do not understand that private things are meant to be private. But the Vatican wants you to make private things public so they can have access into your own private life. That is just what it's all about. So please be aware of what's going on around you. So let's get on and finish with the transvestigation of Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Thomas Decker, and Timothy Chalamet. Let's do that. So here's a picture of uh, um, Mark Zuckerberg, and as you can see, this pubic arch right here and the way he's sitting with those rounded thighs are uh, way too round. And this is formed like a U-shape right here because Mark Zuckerberg is 100% female. So that's why you always have to base your transvestigation on the primary difference between males and females which is the skeletal structure because the primary or the secondary is based on the primary as you can see here Mark Zuckerberg has an Adam's apple if you were just going off the Adam's apples you would say oh that this is a man but this is clearly a woman some more pictures here's Mark Zuckerberg again we've already featured a uh, Jared Kushner on this particular video that this is also a woman here I don't know who this man is but he just crept into the video uh, picture all the same but the what we are laying emphasis on right here is Mark Zuckerberg's hips as you can see right here this Q angle is below the crutch because Mark Zuckerberg is 100% female and not a man in any way shape or form a stooge of the Vatican used to control your perception of your reality so you do not know that everything in this world is run by the Vatican and owned by the Vatican down to the underwear you wear to the shower heads in your house so if you're wearing anything the Vatican has a hand in it and this is just one of those proofs because they want you to believe that Facebook is something that just happened you know that came by um, you know uh, naturally that somebody just sat in a storm room and just decided and was just fooling around and said oh I want to find a way to make my friends communicate um, you know and um, in the and, 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 and so that I can be, you know, we always keep in contact with each other and Facebook just came out of a dormitory and you guys believe that because if they told you that Facebook was an invention of the government a lot of people would shy away from it so they have so many ways of tricking you into thinking that most of the things around you are privately owned when they're all owned by the Vatican so that's just the trick. So let's go to another picture of uh, Mark Zuckerberg. This one clearly, as you can see, the Q angle is below the hips. Oh, sorry, below the crutch. Hips below the crutch. As you can see right here, an hourglass figure, as you can tell right here. He's probably gone through some sort of surgery, you know, to try to look, look like a man. But the hips and the skeletal structure will never lie because all day is going to tell you that you're looking at a female. Mark Zuckerberg, 100% female. A lot of people, um, I know, I don't, I don't think Mark Zuckerberg is Jewish. Uh, if he is, this is one of the tricks that they're like making you believe, oh, the Jews run the world. But no, it's the Vatican. It's always been the Vatican and nothing else. The albino Vatican in power right now. Uh, look at Mark Zuckerberg now here. Clearly, as you can see, this Q angle is below the crutch. There's no denying this. If we didn't have to show up another picture, this should be, this is just end the story right here. That you're looking, clearly looking at a female. Q angle and hips below the crutch, as you can see right here. See that? Mark Zuckerberg, 100% female. If you're going off the uh, secondary male characteristics of Adam's apples, uh, square chin, jaw lines, and all that, you fall flat because you're looking at the wrong stuff. That's why we do not condone any form of slander because bring up those secondary characteristics of either male or female as a reason someone is a transgender or not means you're looking at the wrong stuff. You have to look at the skeletal structure. Here's Mark Zuckerberg with his uh, so-called wife. 
uh, forgotten what the name of the wife is, but we'll we'll show you a picture sooner or later, uh, actual name. We'll pull up the name sooner or later in one of these pictures. Here is Mark Zuckerberg again. As you can see, this Q angle below is below, 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 below the crutch because Mark Zuckerberg is 100% female. Look at this curvaceous hips that he has. 100% woman and not a transgender. Oh, sorry, 100% woman and a transgender. I'm mixing up my words right there. And here is Mark Zuckerberg again. As you can see, the Q angle is below the crutch because he's 100% female and a transgender. He's not a man in any way, shape, or form. If I did say that mistakenly, uh, just pardon me because uh, I'm going through doing so many things and I have so many things running up in my head sometimes that I mix up my words and I apologize for that. But do not be mistaken that you're looking at a transgender and this is no man in any way, shape or form, born woman, taken from a very young age as the Vatican usually does in taking these children from babies and feeding them hormones and making them look like this and making us believe that there are people naturally because all this is creating products because they see these children, uh, these people as products. They don't see them as human beings. They see them as a product, as a tool to use to control a perception or reality. Because Mark Zuckerberg, I can trust, I trust, let, I just have to say this. I don't think Mark Zuckerberg knows a thing about programming a computer or anything. He's just the speaker, the face of the company. That's all what he is. I'm sure he has no clue. Because once you take a child like this, and from childhood you train that child in a sex and gender that's different, the child is confused and will have a very narrow mindset about the world because the child cannot function normally. Because Mark Zuckerberg right here cannot function as a female. So you've taken his options, a very wide option of functioning normally, into a very limited role. And from that limited role, you can mold the mind. And make the mind to be whatsoever you want that mind to be. And that's all what Mark Zuckerberg will know. So if Mark Zuckerberg talks about anything, all right, he's going to talk about it as his life or as a matter of life or death. That's what he knows. He's going to give you so much conviction of what he's talking about because that's all he's, he knows. That's what he's been trained on since he, from a child. So let's continue on with some more pictures of Mark Zuckerberg right here. And here's Mark Zuckerberg with his uh, uh, wife and child. And you wonder where, this, this is what we're talking about. Where are these children coming from? Because Mark Zuckerberg is a female and cannot produce a child. Two females can never produce a child. So where are they getting these children from? All right. So let's go to another picture. Here's Mark Zuckerberg's uh, wife again. As you can see, in order to hide, to the fact that these are two homosexual couples for us, they put on a lot of like you know baggy jeans on 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 her, and then they wear make her wear very slim fitting clothes to show you the curves. So your eyes and attention are drawn away from this, and you're looking at this female's fine figure right here, and you think this is a woman and this is a man. This is all deception and illusion at the highest order. Two females. And they tell you that we're looking at a heterosexual couple. All right, here's Mark Zuckerberg's wife. Um, I, I, I forgot her name. Her name is actually Priscilla Shan. Priscilla Shan, uh, she's an albino Asian. I don't know from which Asian country she is, but regardless, the same. She's an albino. Uh, and uh, as most people with are uh, with anybody with straight hair is an albino. When you watch the myth of whiteness, if you're interested in that, you'll find all that out. Uh, get on the channel. Please, for every video that we have on this channel, please download it download it and save it okay and pass this information across and make people watch the video so they can understand what's going on in the world because our channel is specifically only designed for people who are interested in the truth if you're not interested in the truth this will not be the channel for you because all you're going to leave is with leave is going to be very very confused because we have a lot of confused people trying to watch our videos the, the videos is not for everybody it's just specifically for those who are interested in the truth we're not trying to make this a public broadcast video no it's only for those who are interested in the truth not deluded people or delusionists who think they believe in something when they don't believe in anything because they believe in everything that's how you identify someone who's a very deluded person a deluded person believes in everything Accept the truth. You find people who say they believe in Christianity, they believe in uh, they believe in Buddhists, 
they're like Muslims or they're like uh, New Age religions. They say they cater to everybody. That is a sign of a very deluded person. Or you have people, for example, who say that um, they don't have any problems, you know, um, they have um, they don't have any problems with like homosexuals. They don't have problems with heterosexual people. They don't have a problem with so many other different things. That is a deluded person because if you're somebody who is interested in the truth, you're going to be picking on what you like and the kind of friends and company you keep. You just can't love everybody. The only way you're going to be able to be dealing with people in a homosexual uh, uh, sphere is that you your it's business. So that means, for example, maybe you have a business and you sell maybe uh, clothes and shoes. Then someone comes into the store, then you can't say, oh, no, I'm not going to sell to you because you're a homosexual. That that is discrimination because in that place you have no other option but to deal with them. But you, when you go around keeping company, your best friend is a homosexual. You're very deluded. That's just fact. So deluded people keep love everything. Why do deluded people love everything? Because they don't want to be seen as people who have dislike for something. They want to be loved by everybody. If you're seeking love from everybody, you're very, very deluded. You're a deluded person. Because in a natural sense in this world, not everybody, not everybody will like you. You will not be liked by everybody. And you can't make friends with everybody. You can't make friends with a thief. Someone who steals and you make him your best friend. That means you like stealing. Because nobody likes somebody taking their stuff from them or forcing them to do what they don't like. So if you're making friends with everybody and trying to accommodate everybody outside of a business sphere, you're very deluded. That's a clear sign of a very deluded person. So the little people love everything except the truth. That's how you know you're deluded when you do that. Okay, so um, let's keep on moving on with uh, some pictures. And here is Mark Zuckerberg with an arch in her back, as you can see, clear as night and day. Because Mark Zuckerberg is 100% female and not a man in any way, shape or form. A stooge of the Vatican. Okay. Uh, we ended the pictures of Mark Zuckerberg, and here is Timothy Chalamet. As you can see, this is a tilted pelvis forward. As you can tell, that uh, this is very, very tilted forward, and there is an arch in that back because Timothy Chalamet right here is a woman and not a man, as they've been portrayed to us throughout the media and movies that we watch. And here is Timothy Chalamet again. As you can see, these are very humongous hips, which would make any female jealous. Because this guy, or this, it's not a guy, but we just call it a guy. This guy has hips, and this hips on Q angle is below the crutch. Because he is 100% female and not a man in any way, shape, or form. Do not worry about this long lapel right here all the way down there trying to lie to you that the crutch is right here. No, it's not. The crutch is right around here. They're trying to sell you the idea that you're looking at a male, but it's not. Timothy Chalamet, 100% female, and not a man in any way, shape, or form. All right, let's move over now to uh, Thomas Decker, and this is Thomas Decker. Thomas Decker came out as gay a couple of uh, maybe uh, years or so they were about. But what, this is just all a cover-up, trying to cover up the fact that, well, he's technically gay because he's a female, so he's getting with another female, so that makes them a homosexual. But trying to sell to us that he's actually a man is actually false because Thomas Decker is 100% female. There is no atom uh, or let's say there's such a thing as an atom in a man's body that this person does have. He's actually a girl, 100% female. All right, here is uh, Thomas Deck. As you can see, this Q angle is below the crotch. And look at those curvaceous hips that he has because Thomas Decker right here is 100% female and not a man in any way, shape, or form. A transgender, a stooge of the Vatican used to control our reality. So uh, some people just keep wondering, why so many transgenders? Okay, so what the Vatican does is this. They create all this because... The, when you hear the word transgender, I want you to understand one word. If you're not someone who by himself or herself decided to transgender yourself, let me try to use the word correctly. If you're not someone by yourself who decided to mutilate themselves to thinking that they are different from the sex and gender that they were born with, 
all these people that you see on your TV screens in places of uh, politics and power controlling your world are servants. They are slaves, obedient slaves. So what the Vatican goes around doing is creating so many servile slaves so they can be used to do whatsoever the Vatican deems them fit to be used to control our perception of reality and lead us and rope us all in into this new world order which is designed by the devil himself. That is the obvious truth. Like I've always told everybody on this channel, if you get on this channel and the only thing you're getting is transgenders and the myth of whiteness and people uh, and blacks being derogated and that we are all black and some are albinos, you're getting the wrong message. The message that you should be getting to understand that all this is about your soul for you to take a side. Are you going to take a side for the devil? Or Satan or you're gonna take a side for God this is all what this is about so what the Vatican goes around doing is creating servile or, or slaves like this in transgender so they can be used so they have so many of them trained for all different you know purposes in every sphere and contact in life so that at any point in time they have someone that they can call upon to fulfill that same role that's all what this is about so let's continue on with uh, Thomas Decker right here. Here's another picture of Thomas Decker. As you can see, the hips, uh, or the pelvic, uh, pelvis rather, starts so high above. And here is uh, his navel right there, or her navel as I should say. And the pelvis starts so way higher up and all goes all the way down here. Where is the Q angle, which is below the crotch? Because Thomas Decker is 100% female and not a man in any way, shape or form. Okay, let's go to another picture. Oh, th okay, that's the last picture that we have. I think that should be a good note to shut this video down on. Um, sorry if it took us too long, or we uh, and we uh, talked a little bit more in depth than usual. But we just have to tell you the truth so you understand your world, understand what you're up against. So uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, send us an email if you're interested in the book. The book is out. When you send us an email, we'll send you the cost and the price of shipping on the book. If you do not get an email real quick in a reply as to telling you the cost and price of shipping and telling you that the book is available, know that we will do so because we have to serve the people on the first come, first serve basis and we have very limited copies. We are still trying to get as many copies as we can out of print as soon as we can. So please stay tuned. Subscribe and I'll leave you with these words. Look with your eyes, but see with your brain. And I'll talk with you guys soon. All right. See ya.